What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's video we're going to be talking about a topic that you have been asking me for a very long time. So uh, I, I, I keep getting a lot of comments, people asking me to talk about BIM or building information modeling uh, in general, kind of in broad terms, and just explain the whole process. So I'm really happy to announce this whole new uh, series of videos in which we're going to be talking about exactly that. So we're going to be talking about various uses of a BIM model focused on uh, real project benefits through a digitally incorporated uh, BIM project management. So in this first video, in this video, we're going to be talking uh, about uh, just the kind of the automation of BIM analysis on the design phase of the project. And then in the future episodes, we're going to be talking about uh, kind of, uh, all of the other project phases and how to incorporate BIM analysis into those. So together, we're going to learn how to automate our BIM workflows with a results-oriented approach. Uh, now, full disclosure in the beginning, I, I want to say that this video is sponsored by Baxel, and if you don't know, I have created a few videos uh, of the Baxel manager in the past. So this is a software that they uh, create uh, and uh, or they have created, uh, and it's kind of to explain it in the most simplest terms. It allows you to take your Revit model, or it doesn't have to be from Revit, but from some other software that use, utilizes building information modeling, and then uh, it allows you to extract uh, all of the important inf information, automate all of those processes, and pretty much get you to kind of fully integrated uh, building information modeling process. So it's really exciting, and I'm going to be showing you uh, all of the kind of the all of the BIM analysis through this software. And I'm also really happy to be working with the team uh, just on producing these videos, just because I, I don't really have that much kind of real life experience on working in these large kind of fully uh, BIM uh, automated uh, projects. So I, I'm really happy to have uh, somebody helping me out in designing these videos so we can help you kind of bring you a better picture of uh, what this whole complicated process looks like. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. BIM allows a lot of important project analytics, reports, and requirements in all project phases. The fact is, most of them are still done manually. Using the data layer within the BIM model and the right tool to manage all information, we can get more precise project analytics, better planning, and project control. If we already have a BIM model and information within it, let's then learn how to use them. So in the design phase, the most important is to develop an accurate fit to purpose BIM model. In this phase, we are focusing on the 3D BIM and more importantly on the information within the BIM model. We need to check all parts of the model, data and geometry, and also with data already available from the authoring tools, generate various BIM health reports and quantifications. Planning and construction phase of the project are the most intensive phases with the highest risks and challenges. Besides 3D BIM, dimensions of the project time and cost, so 4D and 5D, are the most important BIM dimensions for these phases. BIM, 3D, 4D, and 5D analysis are very interdependent. Information-rich 3D model provides the basis for future BIM uses, while precise project planning and monitoring shall always consider the distribution of necessary resources, so that's financial, human, or material, in time, so for optimal results, 5D or and 4D shall be analyzed together within the integrated BIM environment. In the next videos, I will focus on the automation process for creating 5D cost estimation, bill of quantities, 4D and 5D construction schedule, data-rich simulations, optimizations, progress tracking, and advanced KPIs and reporting. And the last phase, operation and maintenance, facility maintenance is dependent on the information data database established in the previous phases. So we can use the BIM model and data layers within it for facility maintenance planning, asset management, attaching relevant documents for document management, as well as 6D reporting. 
All previously mentioned analyses and reporting are listed here and all of them will be covered as topics in the upcoming videos. Using the Bexel Manager platform that I have previously demonstrated in a couple of videos and for which you can find links in the description, uh, Bexel Manager is an IFC certified construction management BIM platform that integrates the most important 3D, 4D, 5D and 6D uses of BIM technology, changing the perspective of integrated project management and allowing you to optimize your digital workflows and take advantage of advanced open BIM technologies. Bexel Manager is also uh, a winner of Building Smart uh, International Innovation Award for 2020. Platform offers multiple modules called Bexel Engineer, Bexel Manager, Bexel FM and Bexel CDE Enterprise. All analysis and reporting within the design phase, as well as preparation of the model for the construction phase, is possible to manage within Bexel Engineer. Bexel Manager integrates all 3D, 4D, 5D dimensions within one single source of truth. Besides data and geometry quality control available with Bexel Engineer module, for the planning and construction phase, Bexel Manager module enabling intelligent workflows and automating processes for creating uh, and optimizing uh, estimations and construction schedules, progress tracking, reporting, KPIs and analytics. For operation and maintenance phase, there is Bexel FM. And for work with a multi-project, uh, there is a common data environment solution called Bexel CDE Enterprise. If you're not yet using the Bexel Manager platform, you can download the free trial version. And if you're using software for educational purposes, you will get a full license for one year absolutely free. Uh, if you want to learn more about advanced BIM project management, on the Bexel website you can find a lot of educational materials, webinars and so on. Uh, all of the links will be available in the description of the video. As I said in the beginning, today's topic will be focused on the design phase. And we'll learn about model data management, including various custom breakdowns, for example, per system, uniformat, construction sequence, and so on, and data verifications. For demonstration purposes, we will download the BIM model from the Bexel user area or knowledge base, uh, where you can find many sample models, webinars, manuals, add-ins, cost databases, configuration documents, templates, all available for Bexel users. So let's download a high-rise sample model and open it in the Bexel manager. We will first create a new project, uh, choose download file and open model. Bexel is an open BIM platform, supports IFC file format, so you can import model from any authoring tool that supports IFC. So we can see that the software automatically has broken down basic categories, families, levels, system, all building elements within the building explorer tab. Selection set tab is currently empty. Selection sets are useful for various purposes such as grouping elements based on different criteria, quantity takeoffs, progress entry, uh, issue management and much more. In the in Bexel Manager exist smart rule based selection sets and manual selection sets. Custom breakdown enables users to generate elements breakdown structure according to any criteria. So it's possible to color code elements breakdown and create uh, insightful visualizations within custom breakdowns. So uh, we can see that we have uh, already generated breakdowns to be a precise uniform at classification. And we can notice that all main modules are empty, but each element has many properties ready to be used properly. 
Uh, but before we start a demonstration within the model, uh, let's explain the workflow. Uh, first, which is already done, a federated uh, BIM model is created by integrating models from different stakeholders into one single model. The next step is to define smart rules using already available data within the BIM model. And by applying them to the BIM model database, we are automatically generating either smart selection sets, custom breakdown structures, or quantity takeoffs. Uh, sounds easy. <laughs> Obviously, uh, defining the smart rules will take the most effort. Therefore, today I will demonstrate how you can speed up and automate that process. Bexel offers configuration documents and templates to reduce repetitive tasks and to allow new users to start with a base of knowledge. We can agree that it's always easier to start with some template document and not from zero point, right? Uh, now, a workflow looks a bit different. Uh, when you import the template into a federated BIM model, you can instantly get results. And of course, you can easily fine tune the rules and be more project specific and according to your needs. And then import it uh, to generate the expected results. Finally, if you make any changes within the model, you can always export your customized rules as templates and your own configuration docu documents. At the end of the process, we will create some color-coded visualization of the model data. Let's see how it works with smart selection sets. As I said, uh, we can use selection sets for organizing BIM model elements, and besides that, Use them for further creation of QTO, cost cl uh, classifications, project zones, clash detection, look ahead plans, etc. We will download configuration templates from the Bexel user area, import them, and generate smart selection sets by applying defined rules to the data sets available within the BIM model. We will go to the Bexel user area, tab, templates and download a couple of selection set configuration documents. Let's get back to the model. We'll go to the tab add-ins, click on import selection sets, and select one of the downloaded selection set documents. Before we import it, let's see how that Excel looks like. Uh, we see three uh, uh, simple columns, where in the first one we define the selection set folder. In the second column, we should name the selection set, and in the third column, we are entering the rule. Specific element properties, so the software will know in which selection set and folder to put element based on its property. In this example, rule is naming convention from the source file. Uh, architecture, structure, MEP, etc. Uh, the system is flexible, so you can set your own rules and your own naming conventions. There is also a help tab with more detailed uh, explanation for defining rules within the Excel spreadsheet. So let's import selection set template. We can see that the selection sets are successfully and automatically generated. Now let's see these rules within Bexel Manager. We can see that the path of the set, selection set name, and defined rules. Now we have organized the model uh, according to the group of works uh, using naming convention of source file names from authoring tools. Let's import the uniformat selection set structure. In Excel, we can see the same logic for creation of selection sets, but more structure with folders and subfolders. We can see here that a query or rule is uniformat and based on code on elements, they will be placed properly within selection sets 3. Each selection set template contains the help tab. Let's import the template. We can see that all folders and subfolders are created automatically within a second. Without templates, this process will take time because you will have to create each selection set separately. Again, we can see how these rules are implemented within the software where for the smart rule is used uh, uniformat uh, property. And we can see used property within list of elements properties. Now we have a model organized by uniformat classification with 
folders and subfolders and we can further use this structure for the next analysis. You are able to export created or modified selection sets by simply clicking on the export selection set button and saving it as new template and using it on other projects. Finally, I will show you a selection set template that uses property range, so you can instantly organize groups by custom range of square meter area. We can see that rules for selection sets are category, space, and range of property area. After we open this template, all the rooms contained in the model are separated into groups. You can further modify and enrich templates for more spatial analysis and project control. Now I will show you how to generate custom breakdown structure based on element properties. It is important to mention that you can also use selection sets for custom breakdown creation and be even more flexible while creating desired visual and data model analytics. Uh, here the usage of templates is less important since it's a very simple workflow for creating various custom breakdowns. So after creating federated BIM model, you can use some of the existing properties as rules for uh, generating breakdown structure and instantly get results. Also, it is possible to use creation wizard to automatically create selection sets from custom breakdowns. So many possibilities, right? At the end, visualize breakdowns by using color coding options. Now let's get back to the model and demonstrate this process. We will create a new custom breakdown, name it, select elements for breakdown structure, in this case spaces, which is basically rooms category from Revit, and choose property as rule for breakdown. We will filter and choose room name from elements property list. Just set color coding rule and generate structure. We can see now a list of rooms contained in the project. We practically have visualization of the project rooms, spatial analysis in a matter of seconds. For this kind of analysis, you will need to name rooms within authoring tool, but I think it's uh, already standardized procedure and basically every model has this information in early stages of the project. Now let's create a breakdown for MEP systems. For a group of elements, I will use MEP selection set previously imported as template. Now you can use CBS template available on the user area or simply choose rule from property list and create it uh, yourself. I will filter from list of properties system group name, set color coded view by clicking OK and we have sorted MEP elements according to system name. As you can see we have a lot of elements without defined system colored in orange. Also, you can change colors within color legends, so we can define which color will be assigned to the exact, uh, exact property value. As I already said, uh, we can use templates for creating breakdowns as well. We can change them, save them, and exchange them with other stakeholders. The workflow is pretty much simple. Uh, import template, choose group of elements which you want to break down, generate and visualize by color coding. If you were uh, if you were created or modified template, uh, you can export it and save it as a new one. I will demonstrate to you on two examples, uh, rooms by floor and rooms by area. Uh, as you can see, uh, there are a lot of other templates, even the ones that we've created, so you can import them and see how the system works and then create them yourself. So we will create a new custom breakdown, name it, select groups of elements, Click on the import template button, choose download template and open it. Now we have room ana analysis for each level, we can check aggregated properties and so much more. These types of analysis will save you a lot of time for organizing and checking BIM model.
And let's go through another example. There is a good example where it's useful to use templates for breakdown creation. If we want to analyze area per square meters in the project using range of values, it's easier to import template once created and not define each range separately, right? So we have generated a breakdown structure from the template based on property area and have got the groups of spaces according to the defined range of the property value. Created or modified templates can be exchanged with other stakeholders. Uh, here you can see a list of all uh, sections that can be managed between projects. Finally, you can use custom breakdowns and automatically generate selection set structure with the creation wizard option. Create a selection set folder, select creation wizard from the dropdown list and choose which custom breakdown you want to use for quick generation of selection set structure. So custom breakdowns and selection sets are useful tools for model analysis. In order to achieve full integrated BIM project management and control, we need to address our attention to quality of BIM model data and establish and regularly implement quality control procedures and quality gates in order to be sure that the BIM model is ready and contains all necessary data that enables its uses in the next project phase. Even a small project has numerous data within it and to manually check all properties would be quite impossible. So we need to automate this process. It is needless to say that a clear fit for purpose information requirements are equally important for successful BIM implementation. So we need information requirements in a machine readable format checklist for further BIM analysis. In the next few minutes, I will show you how to automatically check BIM model data layer and generate advanced BIM health report. On the Baxel user area, within folder add-ins, you can download property checker, checker add-in. That includes sample power BI report, user manual and configuration template, Excel spreadsheet with IDS checklist and of course the installation for the add-in. So when we run the process, this add-in checks all or selected elements within the model for required data and creates a selection set with results and warnings on identified issues. For example, which structural walls do not have a property fire rating or which elements do not have identified uniformat, master format or so on. Checking results can be exchanged with other stakeholders using BCF file format, Excel, JSON or Bexel exchange file. And as an advanced report, you can export results to Power BI and get interactive BIM model health dashboard. The configuration document is a simple Excel with series of separate spreadsheets. On the first sheet, there are there is a project phase list, uh, so you can run a checker and verify the required level of information for current phase of the project. Project phase list is not limited and you can customize it according to the needs of the project. The other parts of this Excel are spreadsheets named according to universal categories within the BIM model. And for every specific category, there's a list of properties that should be defined. So Checker will verify those elements within category containing specific parameter name within the find property set uh, with correct property value type according to requirements of the specified construction phase. Uh, the last column named key is used for checking specific valid properties defined in the pick list sheet. Uh, Bexel provides this table open for any adjustments uh, you might need uh, to make for your specific project. So I definitely recommend uh, it is a great starting point. Uh, now let's get back to the BIM model and run our property checker. First, we will open up the previously explained Excel file. We can notice that all categories are loaded within property checker. 
Now we will choose uh, one of construction phases defined in the configuration document. And now we can simply run the checker. Now all BIM elements contained in these categories are being verified. You can also, before running the checker, uh, choose do you want to check all elements or only the selected elements. After the process is successfully finished, you can save the log file and then publish checking results to Power BI dashboard. And, of course, analyze results within the Bexel Manager, uh, where we can see automatically created selection sets with results. Within folders divided by categories, you will find selection sets with results, for example, failed, property is not defined, warning, property code name, and the property group identity data doesn't have a defined value, required property is missing, required property does not have a value, required property is wrong, uh, is, is the wrong type, etc. At the end of this video, let's open up the Power BI Interactive Health Report previously saved within the tracker. We can notice category and property lists, uh, totals of required and entered properties, property value type, properties with defined values uh, within value type and pick list. And all these numbers, percentages and information listed by categories and checked properties. Now we can choose different categories and instantly have reports for them and also pick property values and have aggregated results. And that's pretty much it for today's video. So uh, this was the, the first episode and I, I hope you have enjoyed it. And please tell me in the comment section below the video. Uh, did, you, uh, did you enjoy uh, watching this? Uh, was it clear? Did you learn a lot of new things? Uh, and tell me please if you in implement BIM in your kind of process, a uh, building process and to which extent, because that's, that's, that's really interesting to see just in different areas uh, and in different regions uh, how much BIM implementation there is. Uh, so make sure to stay tuned because uh, we're going to be releasing more videos on this kind of automating uh, analysis and reports in the BIM environment. Uh, it's going to be one episode each month so I think it's going to be really interesting and informative. So thank you, thank you for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe, like and share this video and I'll see you soon with another regular Balkan Arctic tutorial. Have a nice day!